What is going on everyone, my name is Kodamort and welcome to episode 9 of the New Beginner Java Game Programming Tutorial Series. This tutorial is going to be very simple, but everything we do in this tutorial is going to be essential to having our game run good. So I just had the test code that we created in the last tutorial, we load in a sprite sheet and then we render part of the sprite sheet to the screen every time we call the render method. Now if we run this, it looks fine, it seems to run good, but in reality, if we look at our code really closely, we're going to find that we have a huge problem. Our game loop right here, our while running loop, is calling the tick and render methods over and over and over again many many times every second. That means all the code in this render method is being called many many times per second. This also means that we are cropping out part of our sprite sheet many many times per second, and this is very inefficient, because Java has to go to our sprite sheet, it has to find the region that we want to crop out of our sprite sheet, it has to create a new buffered image, then it has to return it, and then we have to render it to the screen. That's a lot of stuff to do many times every second. So that's what we're going to fix today. We're going to create a way where we can load in all of our assets, an asset is basically any type of texture or image or sound, we're going to create a class that will load in all of our assets only once, but will allow us to still use them multiple times throughout our game. So let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete all the test code that we have. So I'm going to delete the g.draw image right here, and then delete our image and sprite sheet code in our init method, and delete the objects up here. So now if we run our game, we have a completely blank screen again. Alright, let's get to creating that class that's going to allow us to load in everything once, but use them from anywhere at any time in our game. I'm going to put this class in the .gfx package, the graphics package, so right click, go up to new class, and we are going to add or name this class assets. Remember, an asset is any image, sound, or piece of music in our game. So go ahead and create our assets class, and this assets class is going to contain one method. It's going to be a public static void method, and we're going to name it init. This init method is what's going to load in everything for our game. It's going to load in everything, and it's only going to be called once. So let's get to work on this. Now, we don't have any sounds or music in our game, so all we have to worry about for right now is loading in our images. Now, I should probably point out that I did change my sprite sheet a little bit. I added a few images. I now have a player in the upper left here. Then I have a dirt tile, a grass tile, a really weird-looking stone tile, and a weird-looking tree tile. So go ahead and create your sprite sheet, add a bunch of images into it, and save it into your textures folder into your game. I've already done that. So this is my new sprite sheet. What we have to do is we have to create buffered image objects that will be able to hold our player, dirt, grass, stone, and tree tile, or whatever images that you have, in our assets class. So up here, we're going to create, they're going to be all the public, and they're going to be static, so we can access them from anywhere, and they're going to be buffered images, and just list them out. So I have a player, a dirt tile, a grass tile, uh, I have a stone tile, and a tree tile. So this is just creating a bunch of buffered image objects that are equal to, or that represent all the images from my sprite sheet. Now we have to actually set these objects equal to the correct part of my sprite sheet. So in our init method, we first have to load in our sprite sheet. So we're going to have a sprite sheet, which I'll just name sheet, and that'll be equal to a new sprite sheet. And remember, our sprite sheet class takes in an image as a parameter. So we're going to do image loader .load image, and mine is called, well, it's in the textures folder, and it's called sheet.png. So this, go ahead and import everything. This will just create a regular sprite sheet object for us. Now, we have to crop out all the little parts of our sprite sheet and set them equal to their appropriate buffered image objects. But instead of hard coding all the numbers in, let's create some variables that represent the grid spaces on your sprite sheet. So every grid space on my sprite sheet is 32 pixels wide by 32 pixels high. And if you're making a tile-based game, chances are most of your sprites are going to be perfectly square or rectangular, taking up two grid spaces, so we are easily able to do this. Now, my grid spaces are 32 by 32 pixels, yours could be different, so note what size your grid space is. We're going to go into our assets class here, and at the top I'm going to make some private static final integer variables, which I'll name width, and that'll be equal to 32, and height, that'll be equal to 32. So all these variables are representing are the width and height of my grid spaces here. So width and height of one grid space. 
Again, yours can be completely different. Now, I'm doing this so that we don't have to hard code in the numbers in our sprite sheet. Because what if I decide, hey, I hate 32 by 32 images, I want to make them 16 by 16. Well, then we have to go through every number, change them all, so it's easier just to have two variables. That way, if we decide to change anything, we can just change one variable and everything will be changed. Don't worry, you'll understand this in a few seconds. So, we're going to set our player buffered image object equal to our sheet dot crop. We're going to crop out part of our sprite sheet. Well, my player is at x0, y0 right here, and it spans for one whole grid space by one whole grid space. So it's 0, 0, and then our width and height variable. That should set our player object equal to the appropriate player image from our sprite sheet. We're going to do this for dirt now. So dirt is going to equal sheet dot crop. Now let's take a look at our dirt image. Well, our dirt image is 32 pixels across, or it's in the second grid space. That means I should be able to plop in width as the first x parameter, because it's one grid space away from zero. All the rest of the variables are the same. It's still at y equals zero up here, and it still spans for 32 by 32 pixels, or one whole grid space. So, we're going to plug in zero for y, and then it's still the size of width and height. Now we're going to set our grass. Grass equals sheet.crop. And hopefully you'll be getting the hang of this soon enough. Now our grass tile is three tiles in. That means we have, if zero is here, we have width, and then we have width times two should get us to the grass tile. The y stays the same, it's still at y equals zero, and it's still 32 by 32 pixels. So I'm going to go down here, we're going to do, alright, it's at the third tile, so we're going to do width times two. It's at y0, and it's still width and height. Let's go ahead and do our stone sheet.crop. And, of course, this is in my fourth tile position on the x-axis. So, fourth tile, that should be width times 3. The y position is the same, and the size is the same. So, width times 3, 0, width and height. And finally, I have my tree tile. So, tree equals sheet.crop. Now this one is going to be different. It's the first tile in its row, so it's going to be 0 as x, but the y position is going to change. The y position is one grid space down, so that means we have to set it equal to the height of a grid space. But the size is still width comma height, or 32 by 32. So it's going to be 0 comma height, because it's one grid space down from the others, and it's still width height. I hope that made sense. If that didn't, don't worry. Feel free to ask comments down below. I'll be happy to answer them. Sprite sheets can be a bit tricky to handle. I know I had a ton of trouble handling sprite sheets when I began game programming anyways. What this has done is it has set these buffered image objects up here equal to their appropriate areas on the sprite sheet. Now this init method has... We'll, we'll, we're only going to call this init method once. That way it only initializes everything once and we can just use the buffered images up here. So, let me show you. In our game class here, right after we create our display, we're going to do our assets class dot init. That should call our init method and load in all of our images or our sprite sheets and create all the objects. Now, if we go to our render method here, we should be able to do draw, draw, draw image. We're going to draw from our assets class dot, uh, I'll draw the grass tile. I'll draw it at position 10, 10, and then null as the observer, as always. This should render the grass tile to the screen. If we run it, it does just that. We have our grass tile, it looks perfect. Now, nothing really visually changed, but if we render a bunch of images onto the screen, this is actually much, much, much faster than if we cropped out every image every single frame. So what we just did was very simple, but it makes our game a ton faster. So go experiment with this, make all of your images and make your assets class fit all of your images into your game. And in the next tutorial, we're going to work on optimizing our game loop a bit more by adding a tick timer or a render timer, whatever you want to call it, frames per second timer. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next episode.